Good evening and welcome to Plain Talk. My name is Christopher M. Thank you for joining us for another one hour session on discussing topical issues facing Guyana. My guest tonight, as you can see, uh, is Mr. Paul Slow, retired Assistant Commissioner of Police. Mr. Slow, let me say welcome. I think it's the first time. Uh, the first time. First time. I'm making a lot of um, first times a few nights ago last year. I think it was. I was first time with the, Dr. David Hines, so um, I, I'm making my debut. Wow, <laughs> wow. Yes. Well, let's talk about debut and first time. I don't know if you can remember. I certainly remember meeting you for the first time in Barbados. I was working with Coopers and Libran in Barbados, but I was a friend of Dickie Fields, yeah, yeah, the yeah, marksman. Yes. You were not. Yes, that was my first tour with the um, Guyana National Rifle Association as a youngster. I made a team that would have been 1978 April. That's correct. I That's correct. Very, very well. That's correct. I was a junior marksman then. I went in and I shot very well, and I never looked back, um, so to speak. Yeah, that was uh, my first tour with um, the rifle team. My first trip out of Guyana. So that was very, very <laughs> memorable. What was your rank in the police force? I right? was a sergeant. I became a sergeant at the age of 21. So even though I was there, I was a very young sergeant um, at the time, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You were mixing with some heavyweights at the time? Yes, people like Nicky Fields, Neville Denny, uh, Paul Archer was the captain of that That's team. That's correct. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, I think we had Morris Young, Cecil Das. A very, a very, yeah. very Cicel good Das, yes, yes, Cicel, yes. Cicel was there with that team as well, yes. Well, I, I had the privilege of moving with you guys. Um, yes, uh, we stayed at Rush Travel in Marvel. I remember all those things yes, very, yes, very, yes, well, yes. very, very well. Very, very well. How are you now with um, shooting? I, I, I well, mean, I have this hobby. I haven't shot competitively for, uh, for quite a while. I mean, I think it, the last would have been around 2018, 2019. And then I attempted to make a restart in 2020, but then came COVID and all of those activities were suspended. And I don't think um, we haven't gotten back into full gears yet, but I, I, I think uh, once they get started and they can find the time, uh, because it's something I love, something I love, and I, I will con certainly um, try to get my eyes in again, as they would say, yes. How, how is it as a sport in Guyana now? Well, um, in terms is of this, is it missing some of these big names? Well, yeah, the big names have moved on. Um, we have some good um, youngsters, but you know, uh, shooting is not a rifle shooting in particular. It's not a spectator sport, so it's not easy to attract persons um, to, to, to the game. But once they're attracted, and we say once the the, the, the gunpowder, once you smell the gunpowder, you become you become a big kid um, to the thing. So we they, they work the, the small bird section which is a section that um, shoots uh, pistols and revolvers. That is up and running. It, they practice very frequently. They have competitions at um, Eve Leary, Gordon Richards is the captain of that team, and, and they're doing well. But the full board section, as a rifle, we, we, we have to travel all the way to Timiri. We have had a lull over the past uh, few years. What is the sport like in the Caribbean now? Well, again, um, it is, we have, what, Guyana, Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, Antigua, Bermuda um, take part in, in, in the competition. But again, COVID put a damper on, on all of these things because we haven't had any Caribbean tournament for the past two years. I know um, there are plans on the pipeline to resume sometime this year, perhaps um, with a little tweak to the format, but that those efforts are ongoing. How would we shape Let's say we went to England now, uh, you know, that's one of no. the... Yeah, <laughs> basically, basically is coming up next month, um, the, the mecca of rifle shooting. But yeah. we, in terms of the Caribbean, we have done over the past 10 years and so outstandingly well. We, um, in Guyana, have been outstanding in the short range, and the short range is 300, 500, and 600 yards. And we have been even more dominant in the long range, that is 900 and 1,000 yards. We are actually virtually unbeatable, that, that's a hell of a lot. unbeatable in the Caribbean when it comes to the long range. We have ex excellent shooters, Ransford, Goodluck, um, you know, Lennox Braffitt, 
young Sean Felician, uh, we have young Tewari, uh, Ryan Sampson. I mean, we have um, some good, we have good people. We have good Euro Malo. Uh, uh, we have some good, outstanding shooters. In uh, we have produced those type of shooters in the past years. You say that um, it's it's probably not a spectator sport. What what's in it for, for the participant? Well, what, what gives you that? Kick that right, I mean, as I the dog was smell, smelling the, the yeah, and, and we shoot over those distances, three hundred yards or thousand yards, and it is very exciting um, to be able to um, like down at a thousand yards, you know, one thousand yards is a long, long distance, and be able to consistently um, shoot a, a bull, hit a bullseye at that distance, take into consideration all the vagaries of the conditions, the light, the wind, and all that. So when you when you challenge those things and you come up trumps by getting what we call a, a bullseye, it gives you that great feeling of achievement. So that is what motivates you. And, and in terms of Ghana, the team has a, a very great, we have great camaraderie. They, they, they get together as a team and, yeah. and the, the camaraderie is there. So I think that what, that's what moves that team uh, along. I certainly saw that in Barbados. Yes. And you yes. were a junior, but... Very junior. We have, we have always been, we have always been a closely knit um, team. Yeah. Well, after your, your, your stint, after your work in the active duty in the police force, you've got involved in um, the public discussions. Yes, yes. Um, you, you had a contra Trump with the um, Police Service Commission. Yes, yes. <laughs> that was just hasn't ended really as yet because the matter is still before the court. Yeah. What exactly was that issue about? Well, the issue, it, it's a long, long story. Um, I was um, the chairman of the Police Service Commission. Appointed by David appointed Granger. Appointed by David Granger in August of 2018. Now, constitutionally, the life of the commission runs for three years. So automatically, 2021, the life um, would have ended. Um, in uh, September of 2020, I had a conversation, so to speak, a, a meeting with the now president, and some suggestions uh, were made, which were... Uh, that's September, that's one month after. That is one month after, the, sem the 16th of September, I think it was. Um, it, it really uh, an attempt to get some persons uh, promoted and um, it was not in keeping with the established rules that is, that, and those were not rules established by the commission of was it what you were doing was not in keeping with the established rules? No, what they wanted the commission to do you, you mean what the, the rules, government what the government wanted the commission to do by promoting some officers you know there's been a standing rule um, in the police force for, for long for very very long that once you have a pending disciplinary matter, you cannot be considered for promotion, which is, I think, quite logical. Common until, sense. Commonsensical. Until that, uh, that matter, those matters are over. Some of the people that um, were preferred or were favored fell into that group. They had disciplinary matters and they were advised that, look, this cannot happen and so on. So I got the impression that it was understood and uh, we moved on. Then the commission met on the 23rd of December to... What was your role in any? Well, I'm, I was the chairman of the Police Service yeah. Commission. We had four other members, um, so I chaired that commission. And I guess it, it was in that capacity that, that I was called um, to, 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 speak. to so meet with the president. To meet with the president. Um, on the 23rd, the commission met to start a process to identify persons from the rank of inspector to assistant commissioner to be promoted. Because constitutionally, no, it's all right. Constitutionally, the Police Service Commission is responsible for promoting ranks in the Ghana Police Force from okay, inspector so to assistant commissioner. Yes, right. And not only the promotion, but also the discipline those persons from inspector, from up, inspector to up to assistant commissioner. Below that is the below that is the commissioner of police, and above that is the president, president through a particular process. Yes, right. Um, so the commission met that we, we, we went through. It's a very tedious process if you want to have it done properly. So we, we started the process on the 23rd of December because traditionally, and the police force... We still, still in 2020. 20, 20. Traditionally, promotions are released 
um, see the promotions and always it's a big thing. They have the holiest ball mm. at the officers' mess and all the jollification. Then around midnight, uh, you know, the list is really um, is re released. Yeah. Everybody happy. Everybody celebrate into the new year and so on. So we were going through that process. We started it on the twenty third, and the very night that that process started, I again had another this a telephone conversation this time with the president, who was very upset that. Um, some persons were not shortlisted because we created a shortlist. Yes. I, I was taken back because I wanted to know how he got the information because that was a very um, confidential document. It's a shortlist. It's a process that had started. It was later revealed by um, one of the officers that the shortlist was leaked to him, leaked to the officer, and no doubt it was passed. Leaked on. to the officer. Yes. Some the, the officer actually said that in an affidavit. So this is not. He, was, he, he said that in an affidavit that the promotion shortlist was leaked to him by a confidential source at the police service commission. Mm -hmm. So that got to the um, president and the call the night he was very upset over the fact that these people were not shortlisted. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was on the night of the 23rd of December 2020. So after the Christmas, the next day is Christmas, and uh, well, something significant occurred on the 24th of December 2020. The Minister of Home Affairs, Mr. Robson Ben, wrote, sent an email to the Commissioner acting or the person who was carrying out the function, Mr. Nigel Appy, instructing him to institute charges against several ranks, criminal charges in the police force. Some of whom, some of those ranks were ranks shortlisted. Mm -hmm. So it was clear that, that was pretextual to make sure that those persons um, weren't uh, promoted. It was clear as clear as on the 24th of December. So on the twenty third, I'm sorry, on the twenty fourth, we met to finally um, release the list of list day, as you would say. And um, so Senior Superintendent Calvin Butas, joined by others, uh, we moved to the court to prevent the um, promotion, the, to block to get an injunction more or less, to prevent the promotion from being released. And they used the argument that um, the well, a lot of frivolous arguments, among which is that they should be considered notwithstanding the fact that they had this many matter spending or they um, said that no promotion should be made until those matters have been concluded. So they moved to the court. But even before that, they preempted everything on the 17th of December 2020 by getting a lawyer. I, I thought you said that we were into the end of the year. Yeah, but I'm just going back briefly for this sure, because sure. what happened on the 17th of December 2020 um, Brutus and these others, uh, people, I think it was Brutus, Chef Pusad, Bacchus, Chavon, Jupiter, uh, Prem Narayan, and uh, Robin Jonat Stanley, they, they got a lawyer, uh, Mr. Satram, to write to the commission, basically threatening the commission that no promotion should be um, released or no consideration for promotion should take place until the disciplinary matters against those persons have been ordered and determined. So that was on the 17th. So we met on the 23rd, as I indicated, yes. let's list, and then we met again on the 31st of December, and then we got this order from the court that the status quo ante should remain. So everything was That's based on the 17th, the letter the on the letter 17th. The letter on the 17th, right. So that, that is where we were um, on the 31st of December, nothing could have been done. The matter was before the Honorable uh, Chief Justice. You know, you know, always says go several hearings and, and, and so on. Um, we retained. Um, Mr. Selwyn Peters and uh, they looked into the interests of the, the, the commission and after several... The Attorney General did not, you couldn't go to the Attorney General in well, case, they, 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 again, because as he said, would normally be the person. As I said, it's a long story because what happened is that um, the, 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 we actually went initially to the Attorney General but okay. in the case, um, uh, Brent Griffith and uh, you might know the case very well, really, the Caribbean Court of Justice ruled that the Attorney General Chambers cannot represent constitutional and semi-autonomous yeah. bodies. So as a result of that, they, they, they had to back off and then we had to get help um, from elsewhere. So it was an all involved uh, evo involved process. Um, on then on the, uh, the t there were several times when the Chief Justice, the matter was ordered and we, were, we expected a decision uh, was to be handed down, but it, it was postponed. And significantly, almost on every occasion, there was some development. So, therefore, on, in May, around the 22nd of May, the matter was to be... 21. 19, uh, 2021. So, uh, 22nd of May, two members of the commission, um, Conway, 
Well, the, the, the sunset to one. Connor and myself were. Uh, Connor was arrested. I was abroad, so I wasn't arrested. We just broke, jumped up charge of conspiracy to commit uh, fraud, and it was clear again that was pretextual to get to the commission. So um, then they moved from that with myself and Conway, because no sooner than this is on the 19th of May, uh, 2021, Conway arrested. I was abroad. Charge filed on the 19th. The very day, the Prime Minister wrote a letter to the President, initiation of process to have myself and Conway um, removed mm -hmm. from the, 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 the commission. Um, then, a, 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 a few a week or so thereafter, another set of letters to all members of the commission now by the Prime Minister. This time, um, it was the fact that we had joined with some uh, politicians, they claim, to challenge the amendment to the um, Financial Management um, Act. Yes. Because what had happened there is that one officer had um, challenged us, a different challenge with a disciplinary matter. And he went to court, and the Attorney General um, represented us initially. And the matter was to be heard before Justice Sandra Cotias, I think it was on the, on the Monday. And the Thursday before, the Attorney General withdrew the um, defense that was filed. So <laughs> this thing is allowed. So he withdrew the defense that was filed on behalf of the commission. So at that stage, when he got the court, he, the Attorney General withdrew, withdrew the, the, the defense on behalf of the commission. Did he have the authority to do so? Well, uh, I mean, like, they used the same Ben Griffith case to say, well, they then realized that they could not have represented the constitutional body, because that is the ruling of the CCJ. Yes. So, all right. So, um, having done that, when, we, when the matter was called, we had the, the, service, co the service commission as an internal attorney. So we instructed her to, to uh, ask the judge for time to refile um, the defense. Yes. And that was done. So the defense uh, was refiled. Now, when we then decided we were gonna uh, um, we we're gonna retain an attorney to represent us because the, the attorney general cannot now represent us, then they said, well, there's no money. That is what the commission. So the commission instructed the secretary to write to the finance ministry to get funds to retain a council. The finance ministry then wrote back to say, look, you have to get the attorney general to represent you. We, don't <laughs> we, we have not budgeted funds for that. Did you get the impression that that was all a circus? All a circus. All a circus. Just an all a circus. So they had this exchange. So there it is. The finance ministry was basically directing the service commission how they should go about the business. So it, it was on that basis that we joined uh, in the challenge because we said previously, before the amendment to this um, legislation, the, the, the service commission would have been given a lump sum money yes. and which we would have managed. But now that this thing has been um, changed, it meant that no lump sum, every time you want money to do something, you have to go yeah, and actually make right. the finance ministry. So they actually control yes. what you, you can do. So we said, well, that is unconstitutional. So we challenged, we joined in, I think the challenge was brought by uh, a member of Parliament, Marvin Mary Paul, and they are, we joined that. So they used that as a basis for suspending um, the, 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 the commission. Totally unlawfully legal. I'm not going to go into all the details, but the matter is still before the court. Um, so, all right. So, on the 16th of... The, the matter that I referred to really challenged to the, the, the promotion on the 31st of December. Yeah. The Chief Justice was set to rule on that matter on the 18th of June, um, 2021. Right? Mm -hmm. On the 16th of June, two days before, we each received letters from the president suspending the police service commission. Suspending or, or terminating? Suspending. Suspending the police service commission with immediate effect. Right? With immediate effect from the 16th of June. Now, on the 18th, when the matter was to be, the decision was to be handed down, it was postponed to the 28th. Yesterday was the anniversary. I, I mentioned that on the 28th of June 2021. And as was expected, by all parties, I'm sure they knew that they, they would have lost the case. The Chief Justice threw out the, 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 the challenge and said that the Commission, among other things, that the Commission was correct in using this very matter as, 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 a, as a measure not to promote uh, process. So that was on the 28th um, of June. So the Commission went ahead and released the, the promotions which were pending since the 31st of, of December. December right. So the very the night. 
anniversary tonight, the 29th of June, I know this date so well, the 29th of June, the Attorney General on his program on NCN, this is in the news, said that, look, they were not going to recognize the promotions made by the Police Office Commission. Right? The government will not recognize. So, since then, the government has not recognized these 132 ranks were promoted from um, inspector to assistant commissioner. Attorney General said they're not going to recognize it. So, we, he said, well, his position was that because we were suspended, once the president makes an order, you have to carry out that order. You can't question whether it's, it's legal or not. Only a court, a competent court, uh, that, 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 that we disagree because yeah. if the order is unlawful, as you will know, it's unlawful. You can't be compelled to carry out an unlawful order. So we challenge it in court. We challenge the suspension in court. Now, by the time the thing came up, because remember I said, I started off by saying, the life of the commission is three years. Yes. So from August 2018 to August 2021, three years automatically expired yes. on the 8th of August 2021. The mother came up on exchange of uh, affidavit and so on, and I think what happened when the the application was filed, they renamed the president as the third respondent. So that was challenged. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so you can't name the president, That's and right. the president enjoys immunity yes. and all of that. So that took some time. So the attorney general won that aspect. Now the very day that the judge ruled, Justice Zeno Posad that you could not name the president and because of the immunity. The attorney general, when then he attempted to give timelines for affidavits and so on, the attorney general then indicated that they are challenging the matter now because the life of the commission had expired, had expired and they are going to challenge that. So, all right, so that was the next case, a challenge, the exchange of arguments and all of that. And then, I think it was on the 8th of March um, this year, the Justice Unipersad ruled that because of the public nature interest of this matter, the matter uh, will continue and what will happen seen in the life of the commission ended, the, uh, he's going to substitute the chairman myself who would sign the affidavit in place and stead of the Police Service Commission. So the, the, the Attorney General appealed that to the full court. He appealed that to the full court. And a few weeks ago, the full court throughout the, 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 the appeal. appeal. So the matter is now in the hands of Justice Dino Prasad to continue. We understand that he's out of the jurisdiction and leave and all that. So that is where it is a very long, complicated it, it thing. Has that's been. that's summarized as best as I can. Let me ask you this. To what extent has that affected the morale in the police force? Oh, tremendously, tremendously. There has been no promotion in the police force since 2019. And um, as we said, uh, senior promotions I'm talking about from yes. inspector to uh, uh, assistant, assistant commissioner. commissioner. And what has happened, um, several persons who were um, promoted have retired without any benefit. Um, and, and therefore the morale, as I understand it, is very, very, very good. And morale in the police force goes to law and order? Uh, exactly, law. because if you have low morale, then people are not going to be motivated to do their work and, 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 and the like. So it's, it's very low. Do you feel that that undermined the entire constitutional fabric? Yes, and that is the basis of the challenge that we have, have brought because we're saying that um, the commission is a, is, um, is a constitutional is body yes. and should be allowed to do its work without any inference and interference uh, and pressure from the executive. And that was the basis of the challenge because when you look at the timelines that I've outlined, it was clear as crystal that um, efforts were being made to, 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 to by the executive to get a certain way, and they did everything, including bringing criminal charges against myself, Conway, two members of the um, Service Commission. Uh, um, and and, it's, and co it's coincidentally, those charges I've indicated were brought since the 19th of um, March 2021, over a year now. And up to now, nothing has really happened, no statements have been filed, no, nothing at all, nothing. What would you attribute that um, delay to? Well, the delay, the, 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 um, in fairness to the uh, magistrate, I think, at one of the hearings, they indicated that because of the nature of these matters, and I think there's a challenge brought by, um, I think, the, one of the GCOM uh, personnel. You know, they were charged for several offenses, and the question as to whether it should be a preliminary inquiry so the matter can be ordered in court, 
or whether the magistrate should or hear and determine the matter. That was challenged. So I think the, the, um, the magistrate indicated that she was going to wait until that matter is um, ordered and determined to decide how to proceed, whether they're going to hold a preliminary inquiry, because these charges are all indictable. So, um, and I think the, 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 the state is trying to get summary disposal, which is being objected to. Yeah. So, uh, right, so that is the issue. One might have noticed, and, and or certainly got the impression, that Paul Snow, the professional policeman, has become a politicized um, member of civil society now. Well, yeah, people tend to think so, but I, I have, I have, been made, I have made it clear that I have no uh, membership in, of any political party. Um, of course, that does mean a lot. I, that's uh, right. I, I, um, uh, I have been very vocal um, since this um, incident because there was a, a, an incident that occurred. I think this is this was the turning point really on the 19th of October last year. As I indicated, when charges were filed against me, I was out of the jurisdiction. Um, and eventually I came home on the 13th, so on the 15th of uh, uh, October. That is the incident of the court. When I went yeah. to court, I paid in court to ask the charge. When I arrested uh, at court for the same charges that I, I, I went there to, to yeah, answer. Yeah. And um, then the police, this is an assistant superintendent of police, Krishna Romana, who is one of the major senior investigators at SOKU. He is telling me, a retired assistant commissioner of police, that I've been arrested in respect to the same matter that I appear to answer, and that they arrested me to read the caution of the charge to me. So I recognize that this, I, and I, I get the feeling that when they were saying it, they were convinced that they were doing the correct thing. And you and I know that, that, that there's no way that that can be done. So I try to tell you, you can't be reading caution after charge when the person is already appealing yeah. before court. Yeah. I said, that is not what the judges will say. Well, they were insisting and we had the showdown. But I recognize then that there's a lack of knowledge because here it is, you have an assistant superintendent, he has other ranks with him. And I was convinced that they believe who would have, you know, they, they were sent and they believe they were doing the right thing. So I decided, look, I need to use my knowledge and experience to try to pass it on um, to the other ones. Because prior to this uh, country terms and all these things, I used to be a regular a facilitator, lecturer as you would call it, at the police college. I was there invited to make presentations on several subjects and, and, and so on. But now I am personal and better and I felt that um, there was still need for the knowledge to be passed on. So I created this uh, program, Speaking Out, Exposing Corruption and Incompetence, where every Wednesday at 11 o'clock, I, I try to, different, different subjects, I try to pass on um, to the police what is the correct thing. Uh, for example, today I addressed the issue yesterday um, with the, the, the disturbance on the East Coast and all that. So I've been addressing these things in an attempt to try to educate uh, the members of the force. Are you saying it's entirely... Um objective and professional or the events leading up um, the, the, all the matters you contra Trump as you said um, which which ultimately led to your being um, <laughs> arrested yes. at the court for a matter you were attending the court yes, with. Yes. Uh, has what impact has that had on you it does not, you know prior to that if, and, and anyone uh, to, to be objective prior to that I was just um, a former retired police officer, I would think, really well respected by members of the force and members of society at large. And I did not offer much publicly, right? As I said, I made presentations to the force and I, I kept a relatively low profile. But that incident, as I said, um, caused me to realize that something had to be done to, to highlight um, these issues. And I, I have taken it upon myself to make sure that issues affecting the nation, issues affecting the post, especially as they relate to law enforcement. I have, I have remained confined to law enforcement issues, which I believe I'm qualified to speak on. So you you would um, you would reject any suggestion that you're engaging in maybe an elegant but disguised form of a vendetta. No, well, not vendetta. I, I, I will reject that totally. No vendetta in it. Because if I had a vendetta, I don't think I would have been 
um, using the opportunity to share the knowledge. Yes. I would think that if I um, if I had a vendetta against anyone, then I will keep the knowledge and in, in, and if perhaps even mislead people as to what is going on to get some type of satisfaction from seeing them doing the, the, the incorrect thing. But I've been trying to teach the right thing, so as, and I don't think that can be viewed, some might very viewed as that, I know, but objectively, you look, analyze it, um, the things that I've been passing on and what I've been doing, no, no vendetta. I wanted to come right up to date to the matter yesterday. Yes. The incidents, the protests, the violence, the um, looting um, that took place at various points, but mainly at the, um, at the market in Monrepo. Was that a failure of security or a failure of governance in your view? Well, it's a failure, I think it's, uh, it's both, because I, I, again, I, I, I spoke about it at length um, this morning uh, on my program. I, I was I have a co-host now, Clinton Conway, also retired Assistant Commissioner of Police. I made the point. You have the shooting on the 10th of June. Yes. The following day, the person who sits there as the acting commissioner went to the relatives and tried to uh, appease and tell them, so well, look, a lot of things were said. Among the things he said, look, um, they are not, the police were not going to be investigating this matter. This matter is going to be investigated by the police complaints authority. Well, I, I liked it that that cannot be. Is that it? I was coming it to her, is that the correct position? It is not. It who, is, is not. who is the authority on the our uh, law? It's, it's a crime and the police have to investigate the crime. That's the law. The, 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 the Police Complaints Authority Act, Chapter 1702, I think it's Section 14, um, gives the Police Complaints Authority the role to supervise an investigation of that nature, not to conduct, to supervise. And the practice has been the police will do the investigation. The investigators from the complaint authority will make sure statements are properly taken and uh, other things are put together. And then finally, the complaint, the authority will look at it and um, decide and, and make a comment as to whether he feels that the investigation was properly conducted. Thereafter, the file is sent to the DPP and the DPP will determine what charge. So that is the, that is how it works. Do you support that that method? If it's a crime, why is it not investigated by the police like any other well, the crime? The, well, the, the law, the crime is to be investigated like any other crime. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That is why I took issue with the fact that the commissioner was saying that the, 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 they are not going to investigate. There is no provision um, under the law, as you're indicating, for that to happen. The police have to investigate a crime, especially a crime. This is a homicide. The police have to investigate. The Police Complaints Authority Act identifies four or five offenses, including homicide. The once a report is made that a policeman was involved in the killing of a, um, a, a person or the death of a person, as the law says, then the police, the, the Police Complaints Authority, supervises that investigation. That is what the law says, right? That is what the law. So that is what happens in these cases, Boston case and all these cases. The police Boston is the case. Man. Yeah, the Police Complaints Authority supervises. Um, that investigation. But to say that the police were not going to investigate was, was perhaps out of ignorance, perhaps out of an uh, um, attempt to just appease the people there and so on. So that was the, that was on the, the, the day following um, the shooting. And I, I, I said this morning, and the failure of security, failure of governance, as you uh, phrase the, the, the question, between then and the funeral, Every night, we, I learned that members of the community, family and other members, were in the village, are on the road in the village, holding vigil and, and, and demo peaceful demonstration all the time. And it is clear that during that time, no attempt was made to communicate um, the, the, the progress of the investigation. And I made the point very clear today on two occasions that we like to look at North America, America in particular. If an incident like that occurs, and, and like any major incident, the press is there, regular press brief to keep people up to date with what is going on, to, 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 to eliminate rumors and all of that. And nothing like this happened for two weeks. Nothing like this happened for two weeks. The funeral was on Sunday, and um, big turnout, big turnout. Then on Friday last, it was um, learned that the the, the, the person, the policeman who was involved in the shooting, they said he was under closers. Again, I, I, there's no provision in the law for a policeman 
who is accused of committing a crime to be placed under close arrest. The law, the Police Act 1701, Section 10, Subsection 1, clear. You are placed under close arrest, which is a disciplinary process if you commit four identified um, offenses. offenses. Right? So to say that you're putting a person who's accused of a homicide under close arrest is, is rubbish. There's no provision for that. But that is what they, they say. So he was there, the man was under close arrest, I understand, close arrest yeah. until uh, from um, the tenth. So his family moved to the court last Friday, he was corpus to have him produced. So they had to appear before the judge to thirty on Monday. And then as you would have seen, you may have seen in the, in the media, some one of those wild news, you know, I know there's, there's a, you want me, social media or, or somebody carried an article to say that the man was released, mm -hmm. right? Which was not, I understand, which was not true. true. Yes. Right? So apparently that caused people to be riled up again. Then yesterday morning, I, on social media, I saw people start to block the road, up, um, in Bachelor's Adventure, not Bachelor's Adventure, at um, Golden Grove, and people started to walk um, east. They passed mm -hmm. several villages, all the way past Boxen, so it was- East or west? They, they were west, sorry, they were proceeding west. So it was presumed that they were heading towards the city. So they come around. And this is the failure of law enforcement in my uh, humble estimation. Because from the time they started, they were walking coming down. Yes. And therefore, you must know um, what time. You must be able to anticipate what time they're going to reach several places. Right? Now, in my training, I, as I indicated to, to some um, in, in my program, you have assess the vulnerable areas along the route. Flashpoints. Flashpoints, if you call them. You will assess those areas. And quite clearly, you must have realized that Monrepo was a flashpoint. So you either, put, enforce it. You, you either put people in the area, but then to compound matters now, people are marching, walking, coming out, they're pulling debris on the road and, and all of that. And you decide you are going to stop them at BV just in close proximity to the Monrepo market. So when the police came and they they came across the road, full battle gear and so on, so the crowd stopped at the market, really. They stopped at the market. And then, as I said, the rest is history. I would have thought that if you want to prevent the people from coming for the rest, you would have, cho you would have had to choose an area which would not allow them to come into that uh, vulnerable uh, Area. But that and that is what it is. What the failure. Nobody from the uh, my understanding is, and this is not being political. This is being factual. Nobody from the government reached out to the, the, the family that we were out. Nobody from the police, apart from that initial uh, meeting that the commissioner the went there. No release to keep the people updated with what was going on and so on. And therefore, tensions started to build. Rumors started to spread. And we had this uh, flash there um, yesterday, which was so regrettable. And I made the point. Repeatedly, and I want to take this opportunity to say it again. I am totally against what transpired at uh, Monaco. You have a right to protest, but once you get violent, it must be condemned, and I condemned it, condemned it in the strongest possible language. Do you think the police? How well? I should ask you whether you know how many arrests were made by the police. Well, I saw a while ago, just before I came here. I think it was 16 arrests. Persons appeared before the Vigilance Magistrate Court um, sometime today. The date and the release said 28, but it must be today because this is something happened uh, yes. yesterday. Yeah. So I, I noted that, uh, and the police made a release and they said the 28, but it could not have been the 28. Um, it had to be appeared in court today, and I think they were placed on bail um, in the sum of, I think, $10,000. And looking at uh, our program tonight on social media, I think there's most of them are, well, all of them, I think, are still in custody because of the time. They didn't get to post the bill on time, and they're hoping to get that done tomorrow. But basically, uh, what I've seen is that the 15 or 16 arrested and charged for righteous behavior, that is what they released from the police um, say. Do you believe that the, that was intended, or was there some opportunistic exploitation of a situation by persons who didn't care about the the initial cause. Yeah, I, I, I strongly believe that's the case because, uh, as was pointed out, 
the people people walk and came down from Golden Grove all the way and uh, let me use the word came for you I said well they were relatively peaceful in that although they were pulling their brain nobody was attacked nothing was done they were walking coming down now they reached to this point at um, at Mount Ripu, and I get a strong suspicion you have people criminal opportunists who saw an opportunity to capitalize uh, on it and that is exactly um, what they did I do not believe that people left with the intention of causing the mayhem that ensued at Maripo, but it was opportunity. That is my belief. From what you know, where were they, where did they intend to head, and with what objective in mind? But I, I get it. But they said they were coming west, and I think the general feeling was that they were coming to Georgetown to perhaps protest um, at the police headquarters. Uh, or perhaps even at I heard from time to time people were suggesting that they might want to go to the same special branch headquarters because the rank who did the shooting was a rank from special branch. So yes. the feeling was they might have been coming. I got the feeling when they were coming. Now, never heard it expressed, but the fact they were coming towards, heading towards Yashtam, I think I formed the uh, um, impression that they were going to come to town and try to protest in Yashtam. But from where they, they were heading, th those were several, several miles. Yes. You would you would drive rather than... than well, you know, when people walking, I mean, t even to come from Bachelors Adventure to um, Maripo, we they eventually took a long distance. So, yes. you know, like when people are in that and the adrenaline move pumping and people are right now... No, but you're planning it. Did well, I, 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 again, I am not even sure, based on what I, I saw there, I, I'm not even sure that there was any real planning because if you look at it at the start it was just the people from the, the top end as we would say and then as they moved along people started to join in join in and then you know the thing now social media can be a good thing and a bad thing i suspect a lot of people were looking at social media would have seen what is going on and decided they wanted to be a, a, a part of that I, I strongly believe that is always unfolded it unfolded what do you think about that um threat to kill the president well, I learned, I learned with the thorough amusement today that the man is a certified uh, madman. The man who made the threat. I think I understand from a source that when they went to his mother, his mother produced documents to show that he's a psychiatric patient uh, someplace. And again on social media tonight, it is said that the man is known by the police and everyone to be a, 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 a crazy man. Because he made the threat and then later there's a photograph with him walking along with uh, Minister Ben. He's in the picture. <laughs> Again, I said social media and these cameras and all sort of things. So I don't think it was a, 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 a any serious threat, but as I, I would say, any threat of that nature, right? And they arrested the man, which is a correct thing to, to, to have done. You cannot assume that is a, a man, yeah, yeah. right? It's a, press, it's a threat against the other state. And you need to take that initial action until, as they did, because the man was arrested, and I don't know if he's still in custody. But I know from what I've read that they have determined. Guys, know to the police that he's, as we say, he's, he's crazy. There were criticisms of Sharon Duncan, member of parliament, um, giving air to it. What's your your position? No, well, I, I, I didn't see what um, Sharon said. I, I, I saw um, some statements condemning him for some statement he made, I did not hear or see um, the statement. But I just want to say that when you are an a, a influencer, and no doubt Cheryl is a social media influencer, he has a program every night, you have to be extremely careful, extremely cautious with what you see. Because you have a lot of irrational people there. And when you make certain statements, people are going to catch on to it, and that might influence them to do the wrong thing. Now, um, what could have been an issue? We talked about governance, yes, and you said it might be both. What what elements of governance you think governance or the absence of governance? What elements were on display yesterday? Well, as I as I it, what in cause and, and right. what well, you, you transpired? Well, first of all, as I I said, I I, I felt that they should have been some type of reaching out very early to the family uh, and the people just to let them know to, to reassure them that things um, were going to be handled in the way they said it was going to be handled. I mean it was clear based on what is now being said the investigation is being done it is being supervised by the um, police complaints 
authority and uh, that type of information should have been there passing on to the people that I believe government had a role um, in doing that. Now we have seen in the past people from government will go to come in. A role and a duty. A role and a duty to go there and to let them know what was going on. And I say in this age of social media it is more important, even more important to do that because you are going to then dispel all the rumors that are likely to fall and show that you have an interest in making sure that this matter is properly handled. I think there was a failure uh, 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 on that part. And then once the incidents unfold yesterday, one can help but believe. I mean, there, there is a feeling, even though we might not have evidence to prove that, and I accept this, and I have evidence to prove this, that government is too much involved in the management, the day-to-day -day operational management of the, 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 the police force. There's too much involvement. Politicians want a certain outcome. We need to have professional uh, senior police to advise that, look, even when they tell you that they want a particular outcome, to tell them, look, that cannot be done or not in the manner that you want it to, to, to do. I am sure that given um, all that has been said and with my experience and knowledge, the action of the police there yesterday and last, it was directed. I am sure they were told to go and get the people off the road and then they went there and indiscriminate. I have seen some things, including one, not so long before they come. The thing is disgraceful. And I would think that every regards to all that transpired um, with the action of the police and, and all of that, this thing called for some deeper inquiry. Why? Um, did it, who were the policemen involved? Children, at least two, I see children being, 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 being shot. I saw a video, um, people, police walking down the road. Well, well I, you know, we talk about media, social yeah. media. That and just shooting it, indiscriminately. It, yeah, so, so it wasn't uh, that a child was targeted. No, I don't, well, you see, again, I have a lot of experience in this area, right? Because you might recall back in 1992, 1997, I was a man who was yes. responsible for public order in Georgetown. Yes. And I know from the experience and from the training, once you realize vulnerable people, children and perhaps women, who are not part of the, the program, you can't be finding discriminately. You can't. You just can't. But I have seen evidence of, I'm not saying this because I want to run the, People just fired, bow, bow. That is not the protocol. That is not what I saw on the tape. It is not the protocol. That is not the way you engage, even when you have to use uh, to open fire as we see how to shoot. That is not the way it is done. That is not the way it is done. Who would have had to give an order to shoot? Well, uh, I, I would think that the, the, the senior commander on the ground um, would have had to do so, and based on what I have seen and what I've heard, the senior man on the ground, strangely enough, was the man who now heads the special branch, senior superintendent Errol Watts. He was the man on the ground. And I saw a video this afternoon, this evening, where he was there leading people and the shooting um, thing. Ought he to have been the person? <laughs> well, I, I, I made the comment because it is unprecedented in the, in the issue of the Ghana Police Force. That the end and you the, saw that? I saw that with my own eyes on the tape this evening. And I asked that question because we have, this is a responsible problem. Yes, yes, no yes. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. And they, there was a confrontation between the said officer and the media operative, Mr. Travis Chase, yesterday. And I couldn't believe that the other special branch was on the ground at BV um, at that time yesterday. That is even before the actual um, disturbance at, at, at um, Maripo. So it is clear that it was a lack of proper command. People just went there and people, as we would say in Guyanese parlance, the people did their own thing. That's true. Uh, 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 no proper control. Now, this, this country seems to lurch between um, every five years, maybe um, not, not only at election time, but uh, yesterday. There's no election on the horizon. Um, is there a broader governance problem uh, that we are facing that we don't want, that we are experiencing that we don't want to face up to? Well, there can be no doubt that there is a lot of tension in the society. And, 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 and people don't want to talk about it, people don't want to admit it, but a lot of the tension is ethnic tension. Well, when you say people, okay, go on, I, yeah, I, I follow up. A lot of ethnic tension, and therefore, I believe 
and the government and all of those persons, but not even the only the government, but the state in, as a whole, has a responsibility to try to, to, to dampen um, this tension. They can do it uh, many ways. Right now, you know, people are complaining about e uneven distribution of wealth. All of those things tend to um, add up and create so that um, sometimes, for example, the, the issue there yesterday, I, I think it's just people using the opportunity to vent, mm -hmm. right? And therefore, you need to make sure that somebody discovers a pressure cooker, the pressure cooker is there, you have to make sure that it is kept under control, it don't blow. And therefore, you have to have several interventions. And so therefore, the issue with the policeman that shot and killed this man is an issue that cause things to, to, to boil up because the tension um, is there and people say it's not an isolated incident in recent months we've had that we've had Boston, Boston. we've had uh, Edley, we've had uh, next Andres, we've had several and the, 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 the confidence is not there that the police and that government will intervene to make sure that justice you know people call up, we want justice, we want justice people don't feel that they're going to get justice and I think that is where the government comes in uh, as well. Do we have, is, is, is part of our problem um, a question of leadership as well and I'm talking about leadership across society, I'm talking about the president, I'm talking leader of the opposition, I'm talking about the state agencies. Yeah, well, there is a question of leadership. I, 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 leadership it's not just being in a position, as I'm yes. sure you will yeah. agree. And what we have, we have several persons who are in the position. Whether they are um, proper leaders it is, is another question, right? I don't believe that many of the persons who sit in these positions are proper leaders. They're just in the position, just occupying space, uh, so to speak. But if you're leading, um, if you have leaders, you have followers. And you have to set good examples and, 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 and be um, reaching out to your followers and make sure that they understand that you're there for them. Not when they do anything wrong, right? But you're there, you try to encourage them, you try to train them, you try to make sure that they are um, they're, they're good people, so to speak. The, the, the welfare needs are taken care of. Uh, and they're like, that is how leaders um, should really operate. And I... I, I um, Listen to say that in many cases in our um, society at the moment at our levels, I don't think we have that type, we don't see that type of leadership and I think that is part of the problem. The, the, the president, President Irfan Ali, was out there yesterday. Um, how, how did he contribute to calming things down in your view? Well, I, I think the, the main fact, you see the president is, as you know, is a very um, the most senior office in, 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 the, uh, in the country, country. Yeah. and I would have hoped that that would have been done even before we get to the stage and I was alluding to that so in the 18 days uh, with the murder we needed someone not even if it's not the president we needed perhaps the minister senior people to go there and to calm the community because it was obvious that the community was hurting and it was obvious that the tension was boiling all the time and flashpoints as we indicated before funeral day you know would have been a, a flashpoint so you want to make sure that you get involved even before funeral day to make sure that things are, are calm yeah yesterday the president went there to Maripur and um to, to, to boxton and um i suspect that he would have contributed some way in calming but remember the ground zero really is uh, golden grove Yes. Right? The ground zero is Golden Grove and I based on what I've seen, the people of Golden Grove are really hurting up in regards to what transpired here last night where people a lot of people should shot people police went in there shooting discriminately and all of that. And, and and I want to make this point because people are complaining that police were telling the police there last night to get out of the street, get out. You're not in a state of emergency. Yes. Right? People have a right to move around. Right? You are not in a state of emergency. You can't be ordering people to come off the street. Unless you're posing a threat to law Unless you're posing a threat to law and order. Yeah. Unless you're posing a threat to... But people who are going about their normal lawful business, they have a right to do so. But we talked about leadership. What about the leadership of the opposition and the, all the political parties? Well, yes, all, when we talk about leadership, we're talking about leadership in its totality. So all the political parties, people from civil society, and, and all of these people, people from the, the church, 
people from the, the, the schools, all people, all those who are in leadership position, right? And not only, as we said, the political leadership or the leadership of the state organization as well, but leadership in general in society. So if a person is in a particular village or a community and he's respected, he has a leadership role. That's correct. Right? They have a responsibility to come and to, to, to communicate and to treat with the people. When, when issues like these happen, is it, is it, and this is not trying to make an excuse for it, is it that people feel that, look, our leaders are not speaking up for us, our leaders are not addressing our problems? Is that part of our... Yeah, no, that, that, is, that is part, that is part, because coming back to the same incident, I think part of it was the fact that people believe that people are not addressing me, our son, our villager, our brother, was shot and killed, and we don't believe that the people are addressing it in, in, a, in a proper manner, and therefore you have this type of um, situation. I, I, we've got a couple minutes. Um, when you see so many persons willing to come out there, um, not at work, not at school, is this a failure of our economics as well? And our eco the, the whole structure of our economy? Yeah, it showed yesterday, it showed a lot of people either unemployed or uh, uh, and there because it was during working hours. Yes. And one would have expected that if people were gainfully employed, then um, you were not likely to have that many persons. Okay, remember, it's just a few villagers. And to see that number of persons out there, because I don't think there was any evidence that people were busting or people came from any way far. It was people from that corridor. And, and, and it happened within a, within a very narrow geograph geographic area. And therefore, to see that number of persons there who presumably um, are not um, employed, it's it's a very worrying. It's a very worrying thing. And once you have um, that situation, as soon as something happens. It's a captive group, it's a captive audience will come out there and to, to demonstrate and all of that. This must be a paradox, given that we're supposed to be, this year, yes. Guyana will be the fastest growing economy in the world. A big paradox, a big, big paradox. The fastest growing economy and then you have what appears to be a very high uh, unemployment rate that people idle and people can come out and, and, and poverty and, and serious, poverty. Yes, serious, serious poverty. Serious poverty. That is true. Serious, serious poverty. People don't want to admit it, but it's serious, serious poverty. Yeah. Right? It is true that some people can't do, do three meal and all of that type of thing, you know. It is clear as, uh, to me that you have serious poverty in the society and it must be paradoxical with all the wealth that we're now getting to see um, what is happening at the lower level. I, I noticed um, former assistant commissioner of police, Wall Slow, our time is going. I don't know if you want to make a, a, a well, any kind of closing comment relating to yesterday and how we might yeah, overcome well, the situation. 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, right, right. I just want to say um, it was unfortunate what transpired here yesterday. And um, I want to again emphasize that persons have a right to protest. But protests must be peaceful and in keeping with the law. The, the, the security forces have a role to play and I want to um, remind them that you have to make sure that you don't do anything at any time to make the situation worse. And what I saw from those tapes, they might have contributed to the worsening of the situation. Mr. Bolso, I want to thank you very much for appearing on Plain Talk this evening. It's been a very interesting discussion, let me say, and I speak for Article 13 as well that we condemn the violence that took place yesterday. We do need, as a country, our leadership, our governance structures, need to address some of the root problems of our society. I want to say thank you again. Thank you. Good night. Um, and I'll see you next week. My guest next week will be former Minister of Finance, Winston Jordan. So until then, take care. Good night. Bye-bye. Republic, yes, it's our jubilee. We had